Hello everybody and welcome to a combo guide for the Attic Nister archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. The point of this little video here is to teach you the combos of the Attic Nister deck. I'm going to hold your hand all the way through it and you can then take a copy of this deck all the way up to the top levels of Platinum. For the last two seasons in a row I've hit Platinum 1 and I've done it in about a week. So this is a really great deck and as you saw from the deck profile in the other videos in this series, I just sort of wanted to actually show you exactly how to play this pile of cards uh, to a proficient level so you can then go off and see success on your own. So first I'm going to start off against the AI, the solo, and I'm going to set it so I go first so that I can just show you the primary combo that you can be using, your bread and butter combo to win most of your games. And if you learn this one first, the rest of it will come naturally. And I promise you, if you've never really played a heavy combo deck before or something, by the end of this series, you should have a pretty good grasp on how to play this one. So we're going to go ahead and cue this in, and we're going to play and go first. Now normally when you're playing in a live game, you're always going to opt to go second, and then you're going to just use your board breaker cards, and then use your combos to close out the game. So here we go, we just, there we go, it's a little bit slow today, but okay. So this here is a pretty strong hand that we can play through so we always want to make sure we have access to two copies of the field spell but the issue with doing that here would be that your opponent could have interaction but you know what we'll talk about how to play through interaction and playing through specific hands later here's the bread and butter combo so it doesn't matter if you start red or yellow you just you start off with a normal summon and then you're going to make sure that you can chain to your next color so to do that, we're going to need I Met You, which lets us reveal a Adagnister monster from our extra deck, and then we get to add a monster that matches the attribute. So we grab I Met You because that's going to be our second color. We're going to go ahead and activate that and reveal the Fire Phoenix Adagnister because then that will let us search for a red. And then we make at Ignister Infant using our Picari on the field, or yellow. If you just remember them by colors, this might be a lot easier for you guys. It's how I learned the combo uh, before remembering all the names and effects. Uh, if I remember how each of the colors worked, uh, then I it made it made very easy for me to get a grasp on what was going on. So Dark Infant's effect lets us search for the field spell. So we go ahead and get AI at Ignister Land. And this field spell lets us once per turn special summon each color from our hand as long as our main monster zones are empty. Now an important thing to remember when you do this combo is that whatever you normal summoned you haven't summoned with the field spell so when you get an opportunity to use Doyon or the purple one a little bit later you want to be ideally getting back your normal summon because then you get an extra extender. So our next step is AI land to play into a Chichi or red and red is going to go ahead and search for the missing piece of the puzzle, which is going to be Doyon, or purple. So then we can add that to our hand. Comfortably go ahead, and our next part is we make Cyber's Wicked. Uh, Wicked is an optional part of a combo, because it lets you get access to the tuner, which will be our synchro option for the deck. I'll cover that combo in uh, another duel, but first I just kind of want to show you the usual chain that you're going to go through whenever you can. And this is a combo you should always default to unless you're being forced off of it by opposing negation or the opponent's field. So the next part is we summon Doyon and we have to make sure it goes into a zone that Cyber's Wicked points to. Don't put it here, that's a huge mistake. So this then causes to, uh, chain to trigger as Cyber's Wicked activates and Doyon activates. Uh, you want to put Cyber's Wicked first uh, and then use Doyon to uh, activate second. And I'll explain that in a second. So Cyber's Wicked requires us to banish a card from the graveyard. Always banish the infant because for access code talker a little bit later, you can use its destroy effect once per each attribute. And they're both dark infant and Cyber's Wicked share an attribute. They're both dark, so always banish the infant. And then we'll activate the Doyon on top. And if you remember, we want to get back the card that we normal summoned. If we normal summoned red, we would take red. If we normal summoned yellow, we take yellow. In this case, we took yellow. So we just go ahead and get that back. 
and then we can use the Cybers Wicked to search our deck for uh, Buru. Is that Buru? Uh, the Green Attic Nister. And then our next step is to special summon, link summon, the Splash Mage. And then Splash Mage, we just always put it onto the extra monster zones whenever possible, because we just do. Uh, Doyon activates when it gets linked summoned away, so then you can use it to add back any Attic Nister spell. So we can get our follow-up for next turn. So if this doesn't actually work out, we can search for our whole combo and we can try to re-combo next turn. Uh, so at this part, you want to use the AI land first because if you use Splash Mage, you no longer control empty monster zones. So then you can't use AI land. So we can use our AI land to special summon uh, Baru. Uh, it doesn't really matter where we put him. Uh, when we activate the effect, uh, we can send one Adagnister monster from our deck to the graveyard. Now, depending on the format or what's going on for certain hand traps, there's sometimes a good argument to send an extra Doyon to the graveyard. Uh, for this particular version of the deck, which is to be able to go first or second, we send the Dinmari to the graveyard. And that will then mean if we have to summon a rival, our rival has an extra negate to protect it. Splash Mage will next activate to get ourselves back a Doyon. The effects will be negated, but that's actually completely fine. Uh, we have actually drawn a a revival spell, so we could vary this combo a little bit here, but I'll just do the bread and butter and then we'll just start another game and I'll show you how to go and do more advanced tricks. The next part is we make our very handy dandy update jammer. And Update Jammer allows your access code talker to attack twice. So then the last step for this bread and butter is to just make access code talker. And there he is, or as we like to call him, Yu-Gi-Oh Chad. Activate the effect. So it doesn't really matter which of these two that you pick. Uh, access code talker's effect gains increases its attack based on the link rating of a monster. I'd always recommend not choosing the update jammer because there are times in the combo where you use transcode talker and that has a link rating of three. So if you pick the update jammer, you'll only get 2,000 additional attack. If you pick transcode, you get 3,000 attack. So if you just mentally check this off from your head, uh, you probably won't accidentally click it when you've got a better option available to you. So we'll copy the splash mage's link rating to get 2,000 and then congrats. Congratulations, we've got in our graveyard Cyber's Wicked, that's destroy one monster. Splash Mage, destroy another card. Well, sorry, it's even cards, it's not even monsters. And then you've got the update jammer if you need to clear third, if you know you've got game. You want to really avoid banishing this because you can follow up on the next turn and win. Now, Access Code Talker, when it resolves, it uh, your opponent cannot respond to it. So you always want to make this the top of the chain. So it's going to be the first thing to resolve. And the last thing that you click when you're when you're organizing the chain. So then what end up what ends up happening is that the access code talker resolves, uh, which means he gains the attack and that no opponent interaction can happen. And then everything below will then trigger and you can get the update jammer without getting interrupted. There's no call by degrees or anything like this. Now this access code talker can attack twice, so that's gonna be eight thousand six hundred, which is enough to destroy our opponent. And that's gonna be uh, the bread and butter combo to start off with. Now I'll just reload the game and I'll go over a slightly more advanced combo. Okay guys, I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced combo when you end up in situations that might be a little bit less than ideal. So in this case we'll start off with the I Met You and I Met You will reveal Fire Phoenix Agnister from our extra deck to let us add Achichi to our hand. Next we're going to normal summon that Achichi and search for yellow and that gives us access to our basic trio. There'll be times where you can't necessarily get to all three of the colors but you can access them through a backdoor method using Baru. Uh, so I will show you, for example, we'll say we didn't get to uh, Doyon in this game. So we'll go ahead and Go for Dark Infant. Dark Infant, when it's summoned, will let us get our field spell. So 
we'll just go ahead and activate him. And then Picari is going to go ahead and get us a revival spell because our next part of this combo is summoning yellow. Because we're pretending we don't have the purple in our hand just for the intent of if this happens to you in a live game that you can then freestyle your way into the correct position. So what you search for here is one of the two revival spells, Idol Reborn or Fighting Spirit. It doesn't actually matter, they're effectively the same. I personally prefer Idol Reborn because it has some utility beyond uh, just reviving a monster. So then next up we would go ahead and link summon Cybris Wicked. So very similar to that bread and butter combo, except this time we wouldn't have uh, Attic Nister in our hand to summon with the field spell, so we can just go ahead Idol Reborn and bring back the Ikari. And then we can use our Cybris Wicked to get to banish the Dark Infant from the graveyard because we want to make sure we still have a Dark for our Access Code Talker. And this will let us add Bururu to our hand. Next, we go ahead and summon the Splash Mage. And we pop that down here. And we can go ahead and special summon the Uru. And we can send the Doyon from our deck to the graveyard. Because again, we're just going to pretend we don't have this one. Or this could be any of the other colors that you didn't open. Uh, what you do then is you Splash Mage, bring back Doyon. And you very importantly do not activate whatever you bring back with Splash Mage. Because Splash Mage negates the effects of what you summon so we want to make sure that we get to resolve our doyon so what we can do here is synchro summon cybers quantum dragon and that will then let us use doyon's effect and buru's effect essentially buru will go ahead and special summon the doyon and doyon then comes down and then we can activate Doyon, which will then let us add an Adagnister monster from our graveyard back to our hand. We normal summon red this game, so we would take red. There are some advantages to leaving red in the graveyard, because during the damage step, when your opponent attacks, let's say they try the Numeron Dragon OTK, you can banish this from the graveyard, destroy your monster in the damage step, and they don't get a replay. There's niche things, just make sure you don't activate this when you attack. Uh, that always leads to sad times. So what we can do from here is just go into our access code talker using update jammer just pop those over into the graveyard and then access code talker and we can use the doyon's effect to add back an agnister spell card which can be the idol reborn which is going to give us that utility i was talking about because we can activate that during the opponent's end phase and that will then give us uh, an additional search and then we won't be under the once per turn restriction off that card so we get so much value out of that uh, then we can just go ahead and go access code talker and this is an access code talker that can attack twice in the event that we only opened yellow or we only opened red and we couldn't get for through our basic trio access code talker can't be responded to and we go ahead and we don't target the update jammer uh, just to build the mental pathway that you are going to make sure you always pick the best option and then at this stage we've got 4300 against our opponents uh, 8,000, but we're attacking twice, and so we're going to win the game that way. So that's kind of a little uh, advanced combo if you don't necessarily open all the cards that you need to. And now I'll go through a combo where we get to keep the Quantum Dragon, talk about the benefits of why we would want to do that. Okay guys, I'm going to show you a combo which will let us keep the Cybers Quantum Dragon, which has some utility in helping us OTK our opponents or clear out problematic monsters along the way. So, in this opening hand, we're going to go ahead and normal summon the Achichi. And we're going to use Achichi's effect to add Picari or Agnister Yellow. And then from here, we go ahead and special summon our Agnister Dark Infant and this will then give us the field spell. So we'd be in a bit of a weird position if our opponent had Ash Blossom this situation, but we'd have uh, Idol Reborn. But we'll go over the game specifics a little bit later in this video. So for right now, we're going to assume that we've got uh, Magical Christmas Land conditions and opponent is not going to interact with us, just so you get an idea of how the combo works for when you play it out in a live duel on the ranked ladder. 
So then our next step is to activate Agnistar AI land and use the effect to summon uh, Picari from our hand. And then Picari in this situation would add a revival spell to uh, our hand so that we have a way of making sure that we can keep our Quantum Dragon and we can also make our Access Kotorka. So if we pretend that we didn't open the Idol Reborn, uh, we can just go ahead and search for the effect here. And then our next step would be to go ahead and summon the Splash Mage. No, not the Splash Mage. We're going to go Cyber's Wicked because we need to get access to our Tuner. Uh, so in this case, we are going to need access. So if this was... It doesn't really matter. If this was another Agnister monster, uh, for example, uh, Doyon or anything else, uh, we'll just go ahead and use this and pretend that it's an Agnister monster from our hand. Because we've got the other revival spell, which I'll show you is important for the combo. So next we activate Cyber's Wicked's effect. And Cyber's Wicked, as always, is going to banish a Dark Infant and then search for ourselves Baruru. Agnister or Agnister Green. And from here we can go ahead and make the Splash Mage. And then from there we can activate the effect to summon the Boruru from our hand and that can send our missing color to the graveyard which is going to be in this case uh, Doyon. Splash Mage is going to bring back Doyon, and we are not going to use the effects. Pretty much the same as the previous combo, but we just got the extra extender, which gives us the room to keep the Cyberus Quantum Dragon instead of having to use it as one of the materials for Splash Mage. So we go ahead and Synchro Summon our Cyberus Quantum Dragon. This is a just such a good card, and I'm going to go over a little bit some of the uh, awesome things that we can do with this. Uh, we activate Bororu's effect here, and then Bororu is going to get us Doyon. And then Doyon is going to just activate for us and let us get back our one of our spells so that we can then... Oh, he gets our monster back first, and we normal summoned red this game. So we take back red so that we've got options in case something goes horribly wrong and our opponent Nibiru's us. Uh, then we can use our AI landing carry on. So this is the part where last time we had we were forced to use the Doyon. So since we searched for the revival spell, we'll just go ahead and activate that, bring back a monster, and then we've got access to our update jammer followed by uh, Transco Talker. Uh, yeah, so we can just go ahead and do that. There's a trick here that you could do if you open the AI land where you search for Gachiri, and then you'd summon Gachiri here. Uh, you negate the splash mate, summon it over here, and then you could make an access code talker that was unaffected. But that's something you guys can explore in your own time. I'll show it off a little bit later in the video, but just for this core part of the combo, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to keep Quantum Dragon and the Yu Gi Oh! Chad access code talker. And the reason that we want to do this over the previous play is first of all well having an extra dragon in play is always awesome but there are some monsters that can't be destroyed by card effects and that's where quantum dragon uh, shines really because what we can do with quantum dragon is your opponent's forced to target this card and if they want to attack they have to attack this card so attacking is very difficult because at the start of the damage step you can return a monster to its owner's hand the cool thing about this is if you attack your opponent and you return their monster to their hand, you can attack again with it. So this then clears out two monsters, and we have three monsters of different attributes in the graveyard that we can banish to clear out the other three. So essentially, we can then take a game shot on our opponent for 4,600 4, over here. And the annoying thing against your opponent here is that if you do clear their field and they want an infinite impermanence, they have to target the Quantum Dragon. At that point, the Quantum Dragon's already done its job. So now we've reduced the number of acts our opponent can have to us taking this game shot. And that's kind of an expansion on the uh, second combo where we're forced to find a color that we didn't have and how to then leverage that beyond that to a point where we can keep a Quantum Dragon and then go for a full clear on our opponent and take game shots. So if you just bear with me one moment, I'll queue up the next game and I will show you some more cool stuff we can do with this deck. 
Okay guys, now we're going to show you another start and I'm pretty sure I can take this hand up to a rival in the event that you were forced to go first. So that's what we're going to be working towards here. So we're going to start off by normal summoning our red. And then red is going to go ahead and get us purple. From there we can get ourselves AI land, which is pretty standard. Nothing out of the ordinary yet, and then we're going to special summon yellow. Using our Ignister AI land, we special summon yellow, and then yellow is going to get ourselves a revival spell. Important thing to remember is that we normal summon red, and that is going to be very important later. So we're going to go ahead and take AI Idol Reborn. It doesn't really matter which one you take. I think strategically you get slightly more options with the Idol Reborn, so I'd recommend it over the Fighting Spirit when you can, but for the intents and purposes of what we're trying to do, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. So next we go up to our Cyberus Wicked. And then we can use our Doyon. Here, and then we do our usual trick. And then we add back our normal summon as well. And we make sure that we banish the infant from our graveyard. And we get Doyon's effect to add back red. So yeah, we just resolve this. And then we'll go into the next step. This is where things branch out just a little bit once we've added our Buru. So we make our Splash Mage. So I'm going to play over here because we need this. This is the important extra monster zone for a reason that will come clear in just a second. So we're going to put this over here. Now normally this is where we would special summon uh, Buru. However, we are not in a position to uh, take advantage of that here because what we want to do is go for the Agnister Arrival Quantum Dragon finish. So what we're going to do is special summon our Achichi, our red. So we're going to get our red and chuck that here. And then we're going to activate the effect of Splash Mage. Splash Mage is going to bring back uh, Doyon. No, we go for Picari. Sorry, I'm just trying to remember the restrictions on the Dark Templar. So, yep, yeah, then we go here. And then we've got three monsters with different names. So we can go ahead and special summon Dark Templar. And Dark Templar goes in this extra monster zone on the right. If you put it in the left, it means that you don't get as good an arrival. So now we activate our AI land and special summon the Buru. And we make sure we don't put it here or here because we want to use Dark Infant and that's going to be what we're aiming for. So now we can summon this and use its effect to send Dan Mori to the graveyard. So, yep, we just go ahead and send Dan Mori to, uh, to the Agnister to the graveyard. And for this part, we then Link Summon Dark Infant and we put it right here in the center monster zone, but more importantly to the corner that the Templar is pointing to. And then this causes Dark Templar to trigger. And then AI Dark Infant second effect triggers so we can activate this and then dark infant will move itself to the next zone so he politely gets out of the way so we go here and then we change the attribute and we always pick divine because who doesn't want a god ai we didn't learn anything from the terminator series now we get to special summon three monsters from the graveyard and the important thing is that you do not pick purple because Arrival requires you to have different attributes and dark and dark doesn't work towards that plan. So next what we can do is we can synchro summon our Cyberus Quantum Dragon. 
using these two. And then Buru will give us our monster back. And then we just pop that right here. We haven't actually even used the AI uh, revival spell, so there's even more crazy stuff that we could potentially be doing. Uh, but, for example, I could bring back the uh, green at this point if I wanted to, or I can hold it for next turn. And then we can summon the arrival Cybers Adding Nister, this absolute titan of a card which then stops the opponent from essentially interacting with us at all. So, we can go ahead and throw this down. And it gains attack. 4,000 attack. Uh, we could have made this 5,000 if we'd have used the AI Reborn, but ultimately 5,000 attacks not very doesn't make that big a difference because ultimately the opponent's biggest threat in their extra deck is probably going to be Access Code Talker. So to talk through this field, this card cannot be is unaffected by any other card effects. So the opponent can't use Lightning Storm. They're not going to be able to do anything to this. If they've got a Kaiju, they can get rid of it, and that's a pretty bad time for you. Uh, especially considering that we have used up both of our Agnisters, but we've got the opportunity to AI Reborn one if we need to uh, Reborn Doyon, and then Doyon can put back the uh, Dark Infant back into the extra deck, and then you can clear your main monster zones. But this aside, we've got a 4,000 attack monster that can be inter interacted with. Once per turn, it just destroys monsters and makes tokens, which can then be used as link materials. Uh, and the Cyprus Quantum Dragon here essentially says that your opponent cannot target monsters you control for attacks except this one also your opponent cannot target them with effects so there's nothing fancy going on and then they'd have to attack over this twice with something that was big big enough they'd still need something big enough to deal with this because they have to destroy this in battle and in this particular instance we've also got the impermanence and we've got the kaiju to play through whatever our opponent sets up and in our graveyard, also very importantly, is that Danmari you've been seeing me throw away so often. So this has an extra effect. While it's in the graveyard where you control a Link 6 monster, the Arrival, you can banish it from the field and target one face-up card your opponent controls, any card, not just monsters, and you can negate its effects until the end of the turn. So then even if they summon the uh, Access Code Talker, you can, at the resolution of its effect, set the chain from here to on, uh, so then when they summon this, it resolves. Once the chain is finished resolving, you can respond to the game state of the end of a chain. And then you can negate the access code talker, and this will drop its attack back down to 2300. Now it can no longer contend the, contest the Cyber's Quantum Dragon. It definitely can't do a rival. And then they would need to make another access code talker uh, in order to be able to do anything and that's quite a big ask for a lot of decks to summon this twice especially since it would only count as one material when used for the second and that's this is a play that you're going to make if your opponent makes you go first you're not going to elect to go first but you're always going to retain the option to and you can also leverage this if something goes wrong in a duel where you can pivot onto this uh if you need to and a lot of decks just can't deal with this and we've got full combo again next turn because we're going to draw another card we've got access to ai reborn ai reborn gets red and then red starts the summon chain again. So this is a very, very powerful turn one field. It looks deceptively so because we're not trying to negate everything our opponent does. We're just trying to make sure our opponent can't actually break our board. At this point, their negation is irrelevant. This is the threat in play and this is unaffected by their negation. And we've backed it up with the Cybers Quantum Dragon. So that's going to be the basic combos for the deck, I'm now going to pull up some of my replays and I'll just sort of walk you through how I play through hand traps and various things like this. There's also builds versions of this combo I haven't shown you where I haven't needed to use the AI land and then the AI land can you reveal the transcode talker and then you get Gachiri and then Gachiri you can summon to make your, tra your access code talker immune to anything the opponent wants to do, uh, which is also incredibly powerful. But you can kind of figure out from these bread and butter combos how you would get to that without me necessarily needing to show you that through. But if it comes up in a replay, I'll explain it. So bear with me and I'll just pull up a good one to show you of actually playing it through. Okay guys, I'm going to cue you into one of the real games I played on the rank ladder. And I'll walk you through my thought process. You still probably saw a lot of this during the live stream, but if you're just tuning into this one... 
uh, we can just go over exactly what I'm looking at here. So we've gone second in this game. So I'm already thinking I've got a lightning storm and I've got a wind kaiju, uh, Godara, Godarla. So I'm pretty confident against anything my opponent's going to do. I've got no hand traps, so I'm not going to be able to interact with whatever my opponent does, but I've got a very good board breaking hand. I'm looking to destroy my opponent's setup and then I'm going to OTK them. The opponent isn't going to get a second turn. So opponent's going to go and do their usual tri brigade stuff. You've probably seen a lot of this on the ladder. And actually this is the variant that is going to get the barrier statue. So this actually means that I'm in a difficult position because I can't end the duel on this turn because I can't special summon non-wind monsters. So first we're going to fish for an ash blossom, draw two new cards, and we're going to go kaiju. So this then frees up my special summons. And we're going to clear out our opponent's cards. We can clear out the kaiju we put in attack mode. And then we can start our basic trio combo. So something to keep in mind is that this card is Tri Brigade Revolt. So it can banish one card on the field when it's activated. So it will bring back all four Tri Brigade monsters. And then they will link summon Shiraz, uh, Omen of the Tri Brigade or whatever it's called. And then that will banish a card. So that's the last card we need to play around. But we've broken our opponent's field. It was kind of a weak setup. And we got for a barrier statue without, whilst giving ourselves an opportunity to full combo. So what we did is we used yellow to get out of Mr. Land in case we wanted to make sure that we had access to two copies of the field spell in case our opponent has an Ash Blossom. If they'd have let the yellow through and then negated this, uh, I would have been in a real problem. Our opponent didn't use the Ash Blossom, uh, so that's also really good for us uh, when we used our Pot Desire. So that's generally a good sign that you're clear to go. So yeah, opponent is going to go for the Shiraz here. Uh, this is probably because the opponent doesn't hasn't really played against a lot of Agnister. It's still a very unknown deck on the ladder. So this is our opponent's last piece of interaction that's going to matter. And we get ourselves another field spell. We're not going to need it at this point. Opponent's going to take away our Dark Infant and they're going to do more Tri Brigade stuff. Yeah, Tri Brigades are kind of silly, actually. The amount of... Uh, setup that they can do because then they're going to be able to go ahead and play again next turn as well they've got exactly all the cards that they need to just go ahead and flop another combo and my opponent doesn't quite realize that i'm going to just be able to make another dark infant and we'll search up blue in this case so we've already got our basic trio uh so this is kind of a luxury search and we're going to get the Iari at Ignister, and this is essentially you only use this if something's gone wrong and you need to get an extra body on the field. Yeah, and then you're going to just see basic breading butter combo with one extra spicy addition, which is going to be this Kachiri. Yep, so we summon it here and we negate the Splash Mage because we've already used the effect of Splash Mage and we can now safely negate it. And then this gives us the Update Jammer. And then we can leverage that Update Jammer into an Access Code Talker. And we use all materials, so we're actually using a surplus of one material. That's how wealthy we are when it comes to cards at this point. And then we organize the chain to resolve like this. Very important. So the reason our chain is organized like that is essentially that now Access Code Talker protects all of the chain links under it because the opponent can't respond. So we get Kachiri's effect, which makes the one monster on the field, a Cyberus monster. Uh, no, sorry, just even one face-up monster you control. Ha, I've, no I've never played this outside of Cyberus. And it's unaffected by opponent's card effects. So the opponent can't interact with this at all anymore. They can't respond to the effects and they can't do anything to it. Update Jammer also gives it two attacks as well. So we've got a double attacking 4,300 attack monster that the opponent can't interact with. I know it's just a case of clearing this out. We leave the tanky. Don't get overconfident and destroy this. Lots of people are playing infinite impermanence. The opponent having this stuck in their spell and trap zone means that they can't stop our double attack to clear the game and that's kind of how you would play for an opponent's 
basic setup. Obviously, it's not the strongest setup, but I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an example of how you're looking to combo through some kind of disruption or something that would get in the way. So I'll grab another replay and I'll walk you through that one as well. All right, guys, I'm going to grab us into one more replay that is an example of putting everything we've learned together to play through very complex game states and why I personally believe the Atagnista deck is an incredible deck to craft and learn to pilot and it's so rewarding. So we're going to queue into this. We've got access to an AI land already. We have our Sinet Mining to find another color and we find out our opponent is on the Utopia deck. Now the Utopia deck is notorious for setting up one of the most oppressive fields in all of current Yu-Gi-Oh. The fortunate news is, is that if you get through it, they have very little follow-up. They have to go all in. And our opponent is not playing the most optimal version of the deck because they're playing Zexal Construction. Still, that's not to play light of how powerful this build is. I'm not gonna go over all of my opponent's cards or what they're doing. They're irrelevant. We can't interact with them at all. So there's no reason for us to really worry too much. What we're gonna be looking for is keeping track of what ends up in the opponent's hand, what ends up in the opponent's graveyard, and what their final field is. And then what we can read the cards, and then we can play our cards in a sequence that will allow us to uh, break their field and then attack for game. So this one actually goes for four turns. So I'm not able to end it in one turn, but I just want to show you guys a real example of playing through one of the most hellish boards you could be possibly looking at. So at this point, the opponent has got a uh, number F0 Utopic Future. This card is a huge problem because you cannot destroy it with card effects. So your access code talker can't actually deal with this. And this, this comes up uh, in this duel. But what you can do to get rid of it is Cyber's Quantum Dragon if you've already forced a negate on the F0. So it's that's something to keep in mind uh, if you find that situation. Yeah, the opponent then is going to use the uh, Utopia Prime up to uh, number 99 with four materials. Four materials is then going to detach two and summon Leo, Utopia Ray, and then the rank up magic gets to attach as a material, which will then let Utopia detach that material to equip a ZW deck from their deck. A ZW card from their deck. So, yep, and then during our draw phase, yep, thanks, Draw Lockbird, showing up exactly when we needed you. Every time I look at this replay, I'm reminded of that. Okay, so. This is incredibly oppressive. If we look at exactly what's going on, our opponent has a monster negate, and not only will they negate our monster, they will take control of it. The good news is it doesn't leave that monster in my main monster zone, so that gives us something room to play with. This has a negate. Uh, essentially, yep, uh, you've got a quick effect. You can target one effect monster your opponent controls, so just half his attack and negate it. So this is a negate, this is a negate, this is two negates. The ZW Pegasus Twin Saber has a negate, so uh, you can just go ahead and negate another monster activation. So we've got one, two, three. Three monster effects being negated. A spell card being negated and being attached to this as a material. And this card everyone always forgets about. it. Uh, when you try and attack, you can change the attack of the opponent's monster to zero, and then essentially they just crash into your guy. So even if you do find a way through, they've got potential of redirecting an attack. So an access code talker on 4300 would not actually get through this. Now something else extra sneaky, which I actually forgot because I didn't check my opponent's graveyard, is that they have access to this guy. But I forced this first and they put this in the graveyard. So at the time when I look at the graveyard, I think, okay, I'm, I'm pretty stable. Uh, this actually you can banish from the graveyard to protect uh, the light monsters that you've got here. So. In my mind, I've looked at this field, and this is the biggest problem because I currently can't get rid of it without getting to Quantum Dragon after I've baited its negate. And I've got to go through four interactions before I can resolve a single card effect. And our opponent also has Hope Harbinger, so my Lightning Storm, which would be my turn one play here, uh, would clear this and clear this. It wouldn't kill this, uh, and it would kill whatever other monster is, but they always go for the number eight. So, we're 
We've also only got Doyon, which doesn't search for another color, but we do have Hiyari, which is great for this kind of position because it doesn't have a monster effect that activates, but it lets us put a second monster on the field. So, opponent is then going to attach that to Heart Pipebringer. That's irrelevant. Uh, so we activate Cyanet Mining. We want this to negate. Doesn't. That's a huge problem. So, now we're going to try and bait this one. Uh, instead, we get this, which is fine. And then we take it a step further, and we go ahead and do our Dark Infant. Again, we've already got the Agnista land, so we're basing our plays around pushing these negates. Opponent thinks that they are keeping us off a field spell that we already have access to. Great. They now take control of this, and it's no longer on my side of the field, so I've still got free space to enjoy my Agnista land. So we activate Agnista land, which is great, because opponent is going to negate and thinks they've got game. This attaches to the opponent's Heart Harbinger, and now we can resolve Lightning Storm. And this is the problem with the sequencing, is the opponent now has the ZW, so they can protect their Utopia monsters. But we can put our Agnister land back into play, because it's graveyard effect. Everyone always forgets about this, is you can banish one Agnister from your graveyard to reset this card. So then this means I can now start to combo. So I'm not going to be able to get access to another color. Not easily. Yeah, especially since the opponent's got another negate over here. So this is what we call a scuffed access code talker, which is where we're going to be forced to make it with a trans code talker. Uh, and essentially when we do that without the update jammer, we're not going to be able to attack twice. But what we can do is clear out our opponent's main threats. So we can then bring back Splash Mage. Splash Mage can then go up to Access Code Talker. Then Access Code Talker. Remember, if we just attack, we will get caught out by the number 99. So we're not going to do that. And then we can clear out this. And then we've got an attack. So here's the biggest problem for this duel, is I can't actually deal with that F0, and it's now got another negate. So... Uh, it's going to be uh, opponent's turn. They go ahead and Harpy's Feather Duster. This is kind of an annoyed Harpy's Feather Duster that I broke their field. And the opponent then goes for Zeus. Opponent is still trying to win the game. I would have just put that F0 into defense mode and waited a few turns to redraw. But the opponent knows in the Utopia deck that they've played out their entire option. So if they don't end the game very quickly... I can just re-combo, and I've just drawn myself yellow. Opponent doesn't realize they can't respond to this, and Access Code Talker, cheeky effect, can banish a monster on the field, not just your graveyard, and your opponent can't respond to it. So if opponent uses Zeus, they can kill my Access Code Talker in the, uh, in the draw phase, and then I will just then do a full combo. If opponent doesn't, I can just banish my Access Code Talker, clear out the Zeus, and then we can go ahead and full combo once again. And that's kind of an example of putting it all together. Opponent knows they've got nothing left and we're going to play through it. So that's how you can play through a ridiculous amount of interaction from the opponent by just reading their cards, understanding your combos, and, and going through uh, with your sequencing. And yeah, I haven't actually showed you a transcode uh, play yet, so I will do that in the next video and then we'll wrap it up. So then at this point you should have enough information on how to get started with the Agnista deck and all the combos that you can do in order to win games. Alright guys, for our last video I'm just going to quickly show you the transcode version of the combo. So. We normal summon Hikari, and this is generally, you're going to go down this line if it's your second turn and you want to OTK the opponent or if something has gone wrong. You can also do it for Nibiru, but I'll talk you through that towards the end of this uh, part of the video. So our first search is AI land with this hand because we need to find ourselves a second color. We've already got access to the Agnister uh, field spell. So the next part we're going to summon Dark Infant, and we're going to do this first before playing our field spell because this will then encourage our opponent to play Ash Blossom and Joint Spring. They didn't use it on our yellow, so that's generally a good sign, but you use it here. Some opponents that know a little bit about the deck will try and stop you. All right, so we know we're clear. We would have also used Pot of Desires to, to bait all of this. So next we're gonna go ahead and search for red. 
And then red is just going to go ahead and get ourselves purple. We can assume that some stuff has gone wrong in this game. Our opponent's going to negate a few effects. And we might be forced to go down this line. Uh, because it won't result in uh, OTK if you do it this way. So then we can go ahead and get purple. Uh, I will, I'll cut out the part with the Cyber's Wicked because we're just not going to be using that part of the combo. So essentially, let's say we had some negates and we're in a situation where we've got no further extenders and we're kind of stuck at this point. The opponent's still got a field. What we can do is just bring back a monster, doesn't matter which. Pop that there and then turn this into Transcode Talker. Uh, Transco Talker goes here. Uh, Transco Talker can then get back a monster, and then that will give you the scuffed access code talker. So, yeah, we just pop that here. And there it is. Access code talker. It doesn't double attack, but it is 5300, so if the opponents use Solemn Judgment, there is a chance that you can still get a game shot off of this. And as always, we make sure that we. Don't pick the update jammer, we don't have it here. We've got free link rating, so we got to 5,300. So a cool thing that you can do with this deck, if your opponent Nibiru's you before your attack, is you still have access to your field spell. So what you do is you use the token they give you to summon Link Spider, and then you special summon an Attic Mister from your hand, and then you need either blue or a revival spell. You get back any other Attic Mister monster. Uh, from there you can make transcode and then transcode can bring back update jammer and update jammer isn't once per turn so then you just go ahead and use the update jammer and the transcode to make access code which can then double attack at 5300 uh, which is enough to end the game which is yeah very strong the, if you play a, if you don't play the arrival version as you may have seen from some of our videos in the climb series uh, you can play Security Dragon, and then Security Dragon means that you don't need to have a Revival spell or blue. You can just have any color that you can summon with your field spell. So guys, that is going to be a complete combo guide for the Atignister theme. Now, there's a lot of freestyling and stuff that comes up based on the opponent's negation. And that's stuff that you can learn as you play through these bread and butter combos and learning how to force your opponent's interaction so that you can play favorably into your combo. I'd really appreciate it if you could like or comment and subscribe to this channel and just let us know feedback. Would you like to see more of these kinds of in-depth combo guides? And I really hope you can join us on Twitch live every other Sunday at around 6.30 p.m. GMT for The Climb, where me and Dan will go over our replays and talk about the meta and we'll talk about the fun decks that we're playing. I'm switching over to a new deck next season to try out and if you guys enjoy this kind of content, I'll go ahead and create a guide for that. So that's going to be it from me, but I wish you the best of luck with your ranked duels this season, getting up to Platinum 1, and I'll catch you for the next one. Cheers.